Hello, welcome to this lecture video. So I'm Teacher Melai, and today we will still be talking about using PS PP in analyzing descriptive problem or problems. So as uh, shown in the, the previous video, so this or the outline of uh, this topic and the focus of this video is to consider encoding the data in Microsoft Excel or directly in the PSPP. So if you uh, watch the first one, the survey questionnaire, so you, you already have an idea on how to encode the data in Microsoft Excel because of course we were able to show that when we computed or when we were able to work on how to analyze the data. Okay. So uh, what do we need to do for us to encode that the data in the Microsoft Excel? So first, we have to go back to our questionnaire and try to place the possible responses here. We will place the possible responses in our questionnaire okay so what are this for instance we have the following so age so let's have this uh, check email check in the relationship We have a lot of money, income is very sufficient, income is just sufficient, check. Okay, so for instance, this is the response of respondent number one. So in encoding the data, so our objective is for us to encode the data, is always to practice writing number or placing number in the questionnaire. So when you are holding the questionnaire, make sure that when you encode the data, you will place control number so that just in case in the, the step where you have to analyze the data, you can always go back to that. So assuming that this is the response. So if you are holding the questionnaire, then you have to place number one for respondent number one. So this is the same. Let us remove this first. So just to show you. So if you're going to use Microsoft Excel, so of course you have to open Microsoft Excel and place the details here. So just in case you don't want to place the name since it's optional, then we can start with the number or this is respondent number. And age, sex, current relationship status, or we can just place RS. And then followed by what are the other questions? So we have the set B, item one, item two, item three, item four, until item five. So let us place that item one, item two. So as, as much as possible, don't use too long variable name. And also if uh, it is also possible not to use spaces anymore because later if you will use SPSS or any software, so one of the requirement is not to use special cases or rather not to use special characters and even um, starting with numbers is not allowed. Item number five. So this is now my uh, data. I'm ready now to encode the data. Thus so you can see here. So we have respondent number one. So we already placed number one to our questionnaire. So this is, of course, when you are, uh, when you floated the question manually. So it's, of course, another story 
if you obtain the, the information or when you gather the data using um, Google Form because of course uh, we again have a separate uh, video for that uh, so just in case you made use of uh, Google Form so how will you um, transform your data in a way that it is ready for analysis when you transfer it into PSPP or SPSS. Because if you will use Google Form and you place there the items or the words, the generated data is not encoded in a form or in a numerical data, but it will be in the words or characters, not other than numbers, which means it would be very difficult and it will not be allowed for PSPP or in your analysis, it, it would, uh, uh, you will encounter some problems because also in the, the discussion in some of my, some of my previous uh, videos, I also made mention there that you have to consider data codes. So that is the coding scheme. So as much as possible, you have to make use of coding scheme. And if you will use Google Form, it is not written, of course, if you, you export the data, it is not in codes. Okay, let us consider this. So for example, for age, so let's use coding scheme here. Number one will correspond to 13 to 16 years old. So as much as possible, lower value will represent just like here, younger age, and then higher value will represent older age. So I'll uh, use one for 13 to 16 years old and two for 17 to 20 years old. So let me encode two. For sex, so you also need to make use of codes here. Like, for example, one for male, two for female, or if you opted to use one for female, two for male, so it does not, doesn't matter. Or even if you use zero for male, one for, fe for female, so it also, of course, doesn't matter. As long as if um, you will encode your data, you know what number it represents. So it can be other numbers aside from one and two. But make sure that, for instance, you have to encode the data in some of uh, in, um, the, the data gathered will be divided among your groups. Of course, you have to use the same coding scheme or same codes for this uh, variable. So here, let's use one for male, two for female. So let us move to the next one. So in a relationship status, so let's have, uh, let's make use of one in a relationship, zero not in a relationship. So sometimes, of course, you have also to be logical in choosing for the number, just like here, not means a zero. So in a relationship, so it can also be one. So it's, it's like yes or no, zero for no, one for yes. So let us encode one. And then next, so what are the, so we have to place one more profile variable and that is the socioeconomic status. So let me use again SES. So what did the rest one then place here? So here, uh, you have to look at now the values. Like for example, we have a lot of money and properties and can buy whatever we wanted. So if I will use lower value for this, and then uh, I'll use one and then two for very sufficient. So it's worth higher numbers. It can may represent now um, higher socioeconomic status. So Instead of using one for a lot of money, I'll start with one 
So let me just uh, place here one for income is a very little. Two for two for income is a little. So these are the codes that we're going to use. One for income is very little. Two for little. Three for just sufficient. Four is very sufficient and five, we have a lot of money. So the respondent check number three, income is just sufficient. So that is what we are going to encode here. It's not the full statements. Then going down to letter B. So it is one to seven. So we already know that this is already in the rating. So there's no need to give another code because it's already given that one corresponds to strongly disagree. Two until seven. And these are the responses. So how will you encode? So item one, the response is five. So you have to encode five. Item two, the response is six. Item three, it is seven. Item four is a five. And item four is five. Item five is also five. And then if you're going to move to the next uh, data or to the next questionnaire, then you have to do that again. So respondent number two, for example, he is male, uh, sorry, he belongs to the age bracket. Let's go back to our data, 13 to 16 years old. So we are going, of course, to use one and he is male, so one. He is not in a relationship, zero. So he belongs to a very wealthy family. So he check, for example, number five. We have a lot of money. Then you have to check our encode rather five. And for example, these are the responses of so five, four, three, two, five. So this is just a dummy data. So the, the numbers here corresponds to the responses of respondent number two. So in the first column, as much as possible, it would be the number assigned to your questionnaire. So you have to assign so that in case that you commit the state. So we have actually a separate video for that, which is sanitizing the data. And then the first row would be the variable name. So as mentioned, as much as pos possible, do not use a very long variable name. And do not repeat variable names. So the variable names must be unique and do not use special characters. So like spaces, dollar signs, and others. Okay, so how about if you will also encode using PSPP? So of course, we have to open our PSPP first to do that. So it's already installed in the, the computer and it is uh, saved under the desktop. So let me find for that. So let's see where is the PSPP. Let's go to our, our desktop. Oops, we have to close this first. For that it will not pose confusions. Okay, so where is the PSPP? So this is the icon for PSPP. So double check that. Okay, so we have, uh, we actually have a separate video for this, but we will just recall. So we have data view, variable view. So in the variable view, you have to place the, the profile. So just like our, where's our data? 
So this is our the this is our questionnaire. So first variable age. So we have to place that. Followed by sex, followed by relationship status, oops, RS. Socioeconomic status, SES, and then item one, item two, item three, item four, and item five. So you can already set it here. And then we have here the type, the width. So we actually have a separate video for this. But as, as mentioned in that video, as much as possible, we are going to use numeric. And then for the, lab, uh, for the value label, so we have to place here the coding scheme that we use. So for one, like, uh, so what did we do? So for age, for instance, so you have to go here and then click uh, value is... Uh, one value label is 13 to 16 years old. Click add. Two corresponds to 17 to 20 years old. Click add. Then click OK. For sex, So again, you just need to click it here. So double click. One is male, add. Two is female, add. Then do not forget to click OK. Relationship status. One in our relationship. And zero not in the relationship. So for socioeconomic status, so you also need to place what is one, two, three, four, and five. But for items one to five, it is okay not to place what one corresponds to and until five, because anyway, um, one to seven or one to five, so for this data, it's one to seven, corresponds to the rating given to the respondent. So we actually do not need to place for its value. So it's okay to retain it as is. And then if you go to the data view, so this is where you're going to encode just like what we did in Microsoft Excel. So one, two, so if you do not want to place, for example, the decimal, you can go back to the variable view and just remove the decimal and set this to zero. So we have here Plus and minus sign, minus corresponds to, of course, deducting or decreasing, and plus is adding. So you can actually remove the decimal. And then for the alignment, so this is just um, if you just like to see how it will appear, so whether it is left, right, center, but this will not, of course, affect the interpretation of the data or the analysis of the data later on. So this is how to encode that data. So as you can see here, there's no need to place for the code or the case because it's already here. So case one, case two. And then age, sex, relationship, status, socioeconomic status. So all the variables are or they're also set once you place it in the, the variable view. 
So later, again, as mentioned, we are going to continue this uh, discussion in a separate video. So thank you for watching.